What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Tuesday night. It is uh, December 20th, 2022, about 9.28 p.m. here along the West Coast, California time. The latest earthquake shows a, uh, looks like a 2.2. Right in our uh, obvious earthquake area today, seeing quite a bit of earthquake movement here into Northern California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here. On the USGS map, I think that's the uh, the hot topic here today. Northern California earthquake activity. We did see some damage and unfortunately um, a couple of fatalities there from the earthquake that struck in Northern California today. Um, yeah, so we've seen a pretty large earthquake roughly around 2.35 a.m. California time here and it woke me up out of a dead sleep uh, my phone i always keep it on silent i turn it off i make sure it doesn't vibrate it doesn't ring nothing goes on when i'm sleeping it's pretty important but uh out of the blue 2 35 a.m earthquake warning expect strong shaking cover and hold and you know all that good stuff that the my shake earthquake app uh, reported to my phone um, and by the way i suggest everyone download that app it's very important. Um, so I waited around. I was stumbling actually kind of out of my sleep there. It woke me and Missy Mimi's up at the same time. And we were just like, what was that? I was still pretty much in dreamland. And uh, I was watching, waiting for some shaking. Nothing happened. Um, so I went into the earthquake uh, 3D office here with the computer. And I seen the earthquake 3D rock kind of um, bouncing back and forth. And... By, by the way, Earthquake 3D Rock, it is a basically a raw crystal, crystal quartz rock that I have hanging off of the ceiling. And I'm looking at it right now about three feet from the ceiling. And it sways back and forth during earthquakes. And when I uh, went into the computer room, it was swaying back and forth. I did not feel any physical shaking here in the Chico area, Chico, California. Uh but I did see the earthquake 3D rock, 3D rock, obviously it's 3D here, uh, was swaying back and forth. So pretty crazy, but man, I was um, I was a little out of it this morning. Um, being interrupted there by um, my phone was not cool. But I do suggest you guys download that uh, earthquake three, uh, that earthquake program called My Shake. You can get it on the, obviously, Apple Store Android, whatever program you use, it's pretty accessible to everyone out there. My Shake app, download it. Um, there were some reports, people said it was a little late that they experienced the shaking first and then the uh, earthquake notification. So eventually they'll get it right, right? All right, so the earthquake that struck this morning, oh goodness, it was a uh, 6.4. And uh, it's set here at the bottom, let me back up here a little bit, at the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, off of the Mendocino, Mendocino Triple Point Junction. They, uh, a lot of news agencies claiming that this earthquake struck within this zone right here. Uh, this zone is the Mendocino Triple Point Junction, which is the um, Pacific Plate, the northern end of the San Andreas Fault, and... Uh, basically the southern end of the Gorda plate boundary. But it didn't. It struck over here to the northeast along a section here of the Cascadia Mega Thrust Zone uh, just to the east, down dip, about uh, 17 kilometers. Now, if you watch this channel a lot, you'll know and realize that uh, we do cover trimmer activity quite a bit here uh, on this channel, down dip about 35, 45 kilometers of this area, there's an event called Tremor, and that's a slow slip event type earthquake. Uh, earthquakes release sudden jolt, sudden release of energy. The slow slip event kind of releases a vibrational frequency as these plates subduct here. So um, this is not abnormal to see this type of earthquake activity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over this. Uh, map here real quick see if i can find out what i did with it here we go um this is the last uh i think i, I went back to the year 1000 
So, you know, obviously we weren't monitoring earthquakes way back then, but just for fun, we uh, put up the last earthquakes here since the year 1000, 6.0 and above, specifically within this area of the Cascadia subduction zone, Northern California, okay? Because that's what it is. Uh, a lot of people don't like to mention that word because, oh my gosh, that's the Cascadia. Big earthquake coming, right? Well, all right. So looking at this area, the 6.4 struck within a zone that does see some common earthquake activity. And it's mostly due to the Cascadia subduction zone. Last year, at this date, this exact date, we've seen a 6.2. Do you guys remember that? Struck a little bit further south here and a little bit more deeper into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Not on any of these faults here, but down dip, about 27 kilometers. And the pattern of the aftershock activity is what we're seeing basically today. A migrational movement down dip into Northern California, indicating the subduction level earthquake activity. Uh, a lot of folks reported feeling the uh, shaking today there in Northern California around Eureka, Fortuna, or Rio Dell area as a violent shaking. A uh, lot more than the 6.2 that struck this time last year. And that is due to the subduction level. A little bit further up north here. But the Cascadia, it's a thrust fault. So you're not seeing that typical transform um, horizontal type movement that you see along, you know, typical areas down along San Andreas Fault or any other fault systems here along the West Coast. This is kind of a thrust area and that uh, violent vertical motion is much stronger uh, and does much more damage than the earthquakes down south there along a, um, a, a slip, slip strike fault. So that kind of explains the uh, unfortunate violent earthquake activity we've seen today um in certain areas of eureka fortuna area and um seen quite a bit of damage uh, i appreciate everyone uh, the moderators and uh, a few folks sharing some links out there to some damage i'm not going to show them here on this update but uh we we definitely seen some damage uh, unfortunately and some deaths and uh, that's uh, definitely not a good thing but uh, obviously, we have to be prepared. And looking back historically here, at this area, just just specifically this area, there's about 36 earthquakes of 6.0 and above since. And I put in, like I mentioned, the year 1000. So the latest, or at least the earliest earthquake here, is 1871 that the USGS mentions here on the map. So we've seen uh, 30... 36 earthquakes none of them triggered the big one out here along the cascadia but the question is how much is it going to take uh, are we going to see the next six pointer trigger a, a big one here along the cascadia uh, the cascadia by the way sits off here offshore of uh, the west coast let me bring up uh an image here and this is the uh, cascadia subduction zone area Portland in the black circle. Uh, we got the Gorda plate, the Juan de Fuca plate here in the middle, and the Explorer plate. A lot of folks, a lot of scientists like to say that this whole plate is called the Juan de Fuca plate. But there's actually three separate microplates that subduct underneath the North American plate right here uh, at a rate down at the southern end of 31 millimeters per year. Now, that's not a huge amount. But the last earthquake here, the last major rupture was 322 years ago. So we have a lot of strain built up. Further up north here, due to the general plate movement, it's a little bit higher, about 40 mm per year. And the Explorer plate up here northward is a little bit questionable. So looking at this timeline, and I'm gonna bring this up here a little bit. This is a Cascadia earthquake timeline. And we were at the year 2000. You can add 22 years onto that. I would love to go back in time and visit 2000. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was a little bit better time. 
uh, 20 years ago, 20 years younger. Yes, please, thank you. Um, so last earthquake, 1700, and that was a 9.0 at least, and they've done seismograph, or they've done uh, um, studies and diggings, geologically looking at stuff out there. Um, and 1700 was the last major rupture. Now, that's the darker red line here, indicated here on the map. Longer red line, indicating the um, earthquake activity in the 9.0 range. 9.0, okay, not, not a 6.4 like we've seen today, but 9.0, which would be some devastating activity in uh, Northern California. Prior to that, it looks like around the... Oh, what is that right there? About maybe 1,300 or so when we've seen the prior one, uh, a prior long full rupture. But notice this, notice this little small line right here. That's, that's a little bit different type of earthquake. That's an earthquake of magnitude 8 plus, probably about an 8.4. Uh, and that is the fault system in the southern branch of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. So the Cascadia does not rupture in a full complete rupture every single event. We see these little segments happen. Uh, these little periods here where just the southern half ruptures. So it's been a little while. We've actually seen two full ruptures prior, uh, or I should say after, uh, a partial rupture. So looking at this graph here uh, a little bit it seems as though we should expect a smaller rupture along the southern segment here before a full rupture at least looking at this graph here and uh let me read this here a little bit comparison of the history of subduction zone earthquakes along the cascadia subduction zone in northern california oregon and washington um, with events from human history Ages of earthquakes are derived from study and dating of submarine landslides, which are triggered by the earthquakes, large earthquakes. Uh, earthquake data provided by, okay, blah, blah, blah. So this is their timeline that has been studied throughout the, well, quite a few thousands of years or so. This goes back to uh, about 8,000 years, 10,000 if you want to add on the last 2,000 years here. So these guys are able to study due to the land sediments uh, from, you know, obviously pretty uh, previous large earthquakes and tsunamis, the timeline of the Cascadia earthquake activity. So look at this gap here. We, we got a little, we got a little gap, but there's been gaps historically in the last, you know, five, 6,000 years or so. But, you know, I, I honestly think that we're a little bit overdue for at least a southern rupture, at least a partial rupture of the Cascadia here coming up. 322 years of uh, stress built up with uh, 31, at least 31 mm per year. So do the math. 40 mm per year up north. So times that by uh, 322 years and you, and you get the built up stress in this area. Whether I think it's gonna go or not uh, remains to be seen. Uh, the USGS did put out a little bit of uh, earthquake forecasting. Let me go ahead and zoom over here to the uh, earthquake forecast by the USGS here. Stand by for just a second. And they, they talk about the aftershock forecast. And this is what they're stating here uh, directly from the USGS aftershock forecast. What they will think will happen next. Uh, according to their forecast, there is a 6% chance of one or more aftershocks that are larger than a magnitude 0.5. Obviously, we've seen some threes and fours. Um, but when it comes down to the larger magnitudes, there's a one in 2,000 chance. And this is just 
their little study, right? Us humans, do we really know what happened back in 1700? Uh, do we know what was taking place in the trimmer department back in 1700? Obviously, no. Um, so this trimmer that goes along down dip into the subduction zone, the activity that takes place along other areas around the plate boundary is very important. So we don't know 100% sure what happened prior to the 1700 9.0 earthquake here along the Cascadia. We don't know. So these little earthquake models are just just a little percentage of, of what we think may happen. A 1 in 2% 2% uh, chance of a magnitude 7.0 and above for aftershocks within the next week. So I listed an earthquake watch here for this area of the west coast due to uh, the activity up north, obviously north of me along the uh, Cascadia. And we've seen some movement here along the southern end of the Cascadia or the uh, um, San Andreas Fault in Southern California. We'll get to that here in a second. I've seen that today. So activity along the west coast still increasing. But again, the you know these estimates here we this data here is very new all this technology I, re, I remember growing up here in the 90s i don't want to give away my age but I, I remember windows 95 and all these little computers that are old i guess i guess the word is old you know we don't know a lot we don't we just don't know everything that happened bef before the uh the last earthquake there in 1700 so um really none of this is relevant um but as humans we want to put out some type of assurance or some type of um okay i'm i'm predicting this or i'm forecasting this but we don't know what happened prior to pr prior to the uh, 1700 earthquake and that's pretty important that's why i monitor all the time the tremor activity and uh, the movement along the cascadia subduction zone and by the way tremor activity um this is the movement not i don't want to scare anyone but this is since about the first of this year january 1st 2022 to today's date 52,000 epicenters of tremor. Now, these are not earthquakes, uh, not a sudden release of earthquake activity, but this is more or less a slow slip event. Uh, and that covers, you can you can see the Cascadia subduction zone, clear as a bell. Not the locked area though. The locked area is gonna sit west here, offshore of the Northern California area up northward off the Vancouver Island range. And it kind of ends right about here around the Queen Charlotte Sound area. So a lot of activity kicking up here. All this stress down dip. I shouldn't say stress, but slippage down dip is uh, obviously increasing risk and, and uh, pressure upstream. It's been in full swing this year. 50, uh, 52,000 epicenters of trimmer. It's a pretty big deal. General plate movement in this area, folks, of the Cascadia subduction zone up here, Juan de Fuca plate, got the North American plate. General plate movement here as a whole, <coughs> excuse me, shows the arrows here. Um, but we got a southeastern movement here of the North American plate with the Pacific plate in this general area moving to the north, northwest. So definitely a lot of strain in this area, but you got to remember the subduction area itself. Um, let me back out here just a little bit. You got certain areas here of the, um, let me see, let me bring up this here. See if I can draw this correctly. Okay, so we got the North American plate here. This whole area moving southward, right? Southward and southeastward in this area. Pacific plate moving up north. Northwest. Wow, that's a horrible, <laughs> that's a horrible arrow. But you guys get the general description here of the general plate movement. Putting a lot of strain up here in this area. 
uh, but at the same time you got uh, some different plate movements here subduction zone subduction zone areas all these areas are moving to the east there's a lot here at play very sensitive area uh, and so far we really haven't seen any any major adjustment here in the southern california area we've seen a couple earthquakes that are kind of uh, got my antennas up this one right here let me uh, bring up the earthquake activity in southern california stand by for just a second uh, we've seen some movement along the southern branch of the san andreas fault over the over the past couple days uh, including a 2.5 earlier this afternoon really this evening time frame uh, just off the southern branch here uh, things were lighting up a little bit earlier and it's kind of why it issued an earthquake watch here for this region and also due to the fact that we haven't seen any westward pressure movement and i mean westward pressure movement because the general plate movement here shows that this is a general plate activity plate tectonics you know whether they're you consider these jigsaw puzzles floating on some uh, liquid magma. The movement of the plates tell the story of our uh, of our history here of land, oceanic crust movement. Nothing going on here across the Western Pacific. So activity is obviously building up, back building here along the Eastern Pacific and adjacent plates. Looking at the big picture, still very quiet. Look at that. We haven't seen anything that would release pressure out here along the West Coast. Uh, until we see that, until we see at least, it's got to be at least a six or so, something maybe possibly greater in this area uh, along the Java Trench areas around the Himalayas. Um, I think we need to be on guard here along the West Coast for some further movement. And we really haven't seen that. Here along the Kermadec Trench, Tonga area, we did see a 5.4. That's about the latest earthquake into the area of the, uh, in between the Tonga and the Kermadec Trench area, about 20 uh, or 35 kilometers deep. But until then, folks, I think West Coast be on guard. And, you know, a lot of questions on the Cascadia. Um, is it going to blow? Is it going to pop? Is there volcanoes down here? There's really no separation here of the seafloor. This is all subduction level, so there's no volcanic activity down here. We do have the, um, certain fracture zones uh, with uh, various sea mounts around here, uh, but no active activity. We did see a 4.6 off the Oregon coastline into the Blanco fracture zone north, though, uh, somewhat into the... Uh, into the Juan de Fuca plate itself. And I think that's just an overall sign of seismic activity increase uh, along the Western or the Eastern Pacific. Um, but definitely a ways away from the fracture zone itself, 4.6, 10 kilometers deep. That is the defaulted uh, estimated depth there of that earthquake uncertainty, obviously when they shoot that uh, 10 kilometer uh, uh, feature. But overall, that's a general sign here regionally uh, that activity is increasing out here along the Eastern Pacific. It uh, doesn't matter if we see one up here, one down there, one over here. It may seem like a huge distance for us. Uh, you know, imagine walking from uh, Los Angeles all the way up to, you know, the Blanco Fracture Zone. That's a long ways. But when these jigsaw puzzle pieces here move around that's just a very minimal amount of distance so as a whole west coast eastern pacific be on guard that's it's a lot of activity kicking up here and looking at the last hour of earthquake activity here in the red circles we got 111 earthquakes so far today the migrational fashion here of these earthquakes are increasing down dip and further to the east here of the main quake which happened uh it's buried it's buried right here there we go 6.4 uh, near ferndale just off the coast and uh the activity continuing today folks continuing tonight 
And that earthquake, I got I really got to show you guys the uh, uh, the did you fill it reports. It was felt all over the place, and um, a lot of folks reported that earthquake on the uh, videos I posted. I appreciate all the comments. Let me know where where you were at and what it felt like. A lot of folks reported that violent shaking a little bit more so a little bit more so than last year's earthquake. Eureka, Fortuna area, seen some strong and very strong shaking uh, this morning. There's quite a bit of damage, uh, quite a bit of road damage, uh, building damage as well. So, and that is due to the thrust faulting of this earthquake. This vicinity of this earthquake is associated, obviously, with the Cascadia subduction zone. You get that vertical displacement, creating more damage, more so than you would see during a strike slip event. And some some folks reported uh, San Francisco, Sacramento, Truckee, Medford, up into uh, areas of the coast of Oregon as well. I didn't feel it. I was dead asleep, but I was rudely woken up by the uh, my quake or my shake earthquake notification. It's an early uh, earthquake notification system, and I, you know, had this been a 9.0 or something going on along the Cascadia. I would have woke up and basically I, I braced myself when I heard my alarm go off there uh, from my phone. I kind of woke up, me and Miss Mimi's looked at each other and I just kind of grabbed onto the bed, looking at my lamp, expecting some strong shaking because that's what it stated. But it didn't happen, fortunately, uh, at least for here along the Chico area of Northern California. But, um, it's a warning. It's it's a uh, it's a reminder here that we live along a major subduction area, uh, subduction area, and um, they don't like to mention it a lot. But the Cascadia has been building up pressure for quite some time, folks, uh, and it's just a matter of time uh, before uh, the next big one does hit the uh, Northern California area northward. So they put out a statement here, the USGS did. I'm going to read this here real quick down here. Uh, the tectonic summary from the 6.4 that struck about 2.35 a.m. California time. Uh, it occurred approximately 15 kilometers southwest of Ferndale, near the coast of Northern California in the vicinity of the Mendocino Triple Point Junction in the vicinity. But literally, this was within the Cascadia. Uh, it is a location where the Pacific, North American Plate, and the Juan de Fuca and Gorda Plates meet. Focal mechanism solutions indicate that the rupture occurred as a result of strike-slip faulting on a steeply dipping fault, striking either southeast or southwest. Um, the location, depth, and fault, uh, faulting mechanism indicate that this event likely occurred within the subducting Gorda Plate, with this, which is... The subduction zone. They don't like to use these words that scare people. Um, earthquakes are common in this region around the Mendocino Triple Point Junction. Oblique motion between the southern Juan de Fuca plate and the Gorda plate and Pacific plate causes north-south compression within the Gorda plate and right lateral transition translation along the boundary between the plates. Um, we do know that a 6.2 occurred this date last year. In the past century, there has been 40 other earthquakes, M6.0 or larger, including six, six earthquakes, M7 or larger, uh, within about 250 kilometers of the uh, earthquake today. So here's the important part. These prior earthquakes primarily occurred along the Mendocino Transform Fault in the Cascadia subduction zone. So that's the big deal. That's within the Cascadia. That's the one that everyone's like, oh my gosh, you know, that's, well, obviously, who wouldn't be scared, right? Uh, a nine-pointer out here and a huge tsunami along the West Coast. That's um, it's something to obviously be alert about. Uh, being scared, maybe not, but being prepared is a little bit more likely scenario for survival uh, should a mega quake happen out here. And they will. There's no doubt a mega quake will happen along the West Coast. Um, it's not if. Will, will it ever happen? Yes, it will. 322 years ago, it happened. 
regular intervals of this earthquake, 250 to roughly about 500 years. But you've seen the list. I showed you guys the little graph here. We can see a partial rupture and an eight pointer up here, probably an 8.5 along the subduction zone of southern of the uh, southern Cascadia. Oh, no doubt. No doubt that would trigger a tsunami. So doesn't take a nine pointer to create devastation out here. All it takes is a little partial rupture and that's it. So be prepared. The uh, MyShake app has a lot of information when it comes to being prepared out here far as an earthquake uh, of a large, you know, a large magnitude goes. Be prepared. That's all I, that's all I can say. Um, and I'm still keeping up an earthquake watch here for the West Coast uh, due to the fact that we have not seen any sufficient movement here with the release of pressure um, on the western side of the plate. So other areas aside from that, uh, still booming like crazy. And by the way, um, Densmore and the Petrolia station up here are the stations to watch for continued earthquake activity. And I guarantee you, and just looking at these graphs here, we have seen way more. I'm talking probably triple more than the 111 earthquakes that we're seeing here on the USGS map. Probably about 400 or so uh, that have taken place in this area. And eventually, the USGS will get to it. Now, there's a couple earthquakes up here, specifically along the Cascadia Megathrust subduction zone. Notice these earthquakes up here. Uh, they have not been reviewed yet. They're still underneath automatic status, which means the USGS is probably a little bit on overload. And uh, I, I don't think anyone's working double time tonight, right? Uh, but they are, I'm sure, getting on uh, the earthquake activity. And we'll be reporting and accurately updating these uh, questionable earthquakes uh, throughout the next coming days. All right, West Coast activity, aside from that, down south, as I mentioned, a little bit of movement along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Inland activity here across Nevada. Not a whole lot going on across the Yellowstone area. Uh, let me bring up Yellowstone National Park and see what we got here. Uh, obviously, we've seen the uh, 6.4 signature booming across the Yellowstone area. It was not felt in Yellowstone, but uh, the seismograph stations picked up pretty nicely very nicely uh, i do want to show you guys real quick here uh, let's see if i can find out what i did with this i got quite a few maps listed up um goodness what did i do with that oh, stand by for just a second um do, 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 do. waveforms no oh, what did i do with it i lost it somewhere but uh, I was looking at uh, a couple different stations here across the area. And uh, maybe this is it right here. Uh, this kind of shows the general magnitude of stations reporting the, um, the original earthquake that struck this morning. And there's a couple stations here indicating that magnitude was much higher than the 6.4. One of those stations was reporting a 7.2 uh, for that magnitude. In fact, a couple stations are reporting a seven pointer uh, for that earthquake this morning. So they average out these earthquakes. There's a 7.8. Uh, they average out all these uh, readings here from various seismograph stations. And you, you can see obviously there's quite a few of them above seven, quite a few of them much lower as well. Uh, and the average uh, they average out to a 6.4, uh, specifically a 6.37 to be exact. But as you can see, some of those stations are reported much higher and much lower. So uh, crazy, crazy stuff going on for sure with that earthquake. Uh, center portion of the country, not a whole lot going on. A couple earthquakes outside of the uh, uh, OKC area in Oklahoma. And some movement outside of Pecos, Texas, down there in the south. Uh, one small earthquake up north of the Concord, uh, New Hampshire area, looks like. A little 1.9, 5 kilometers deep. 
But, uh, you know, these little quiet periods here, we need to watch and see what's going on. Uh, we do have a 5.1 mid-Indian ridge. This is a divergent boundary, a little separation fracture of the seafloor uh, kicking up. No further movement, su surface movement activity here around the Western Pacific. So um, I think we still need to watch this area along the West Coast pretty specifically uh, for some further activity, folks. Not even joking. Just be prepared. The trimmer activity tonight, I uh, don't believe we've seen anything along the Cascadia far as Northern California here in the uh, uh, Eugene area, down dip. Seeing a little bit of earthquake activity, or well, at least tremor activity, 23 epicenters uh, into that region. Volcanic seismicity, I'm sure there's not a whole lot going on. Mount St. Helens, we will verify that real quick. And I'm going to go check my barbecue real quick here before I burn it. Um, stand by for just a second. Uh, a little bit of spiky activity here across, across Mount St. Helens. And uh, there's the big one. That is the big one, the 6.4 Northern California. That was a pretty lengthy earthquake as well, NOSA signature. And uh, that was reported up here around the Mount St. Helens area of Washington. Pretty much flatlined all of the activity throughout the day today. So, uh, yeah, kind of, a, kind of a large shaker. Definitely a large shaker. And un unfortunately, uh, you know, those fatalities up there, it's... Uh, it's earthquake country, and I think everyone needs to make sure they have an earthquake plan, folks. You have to. Uh, it's some beautiful area. Absolutely beautiful area. If you erase this Cascadia subduction zone uh, and these other uh, plate boundaries, I think we're good. But you have a sleeping monster out here. That Look at all those fractures from this subduction level. They extend all the way up past the Vancouver Island Ranges. That's the danger zone, okay? The subduction zones consist in areas across the Pacific, and not only Pacific, but down around New Zealand, other areas around Japan. Uh, if you guys remember 2011 Japan earthquake, that nine-pointer, huge tsunami inland. That's what's going to take place here along the, the uh, Cascadia. And this is much closer, so the damage will be worse uh, along the western coast here. So for the folks here that live here, man, all I can say is please look at your earthquake plan. What are you going to do if something big happens? You know, I get it. If a TV falls off, your computer breaks, um, maybe you've got a couple fractures in your foundation of your, your beautiful house. That's minimal. That's very minimal. The 6.4 today is just a wake-up call uh, for the much bigger earthquake that will happen. And a little fracture in the foundation is nothing uh, compared to what a nine-pointer will do up and down the coastline here of the uh, Pacific Northwest. That includes Ferndale, Eureka area. Those areas will be, uh, no doubt, um, not only from the shaking, uh, damage from the shaking, but the tsunami effect will be uh, um, pretty much the, uh, the second event. But it could be the worst event. So please, have an earthquake plan. Um, a lot of folks don't think about it, right? Well, if it happens, it happens. You know, it's, you can't say that. You cannot say that. Loss of life happens because of that. You got to make sure, you know, if you want to protect your family, yourself, your belongings, um, you feel shaking like that, um, you got to get to higher ground. Some higher ground is important when it comes to the tsunami. Luckily, there was no tsunami produced from the 6.4. Uh, but the shaking enough was uh, pretty damaging. 6.4 compared to a 9.0. There's no comparison. All right, guys. Um, let me check space weather activity here real quick. Let me. Uh, I know we've been chatting a lot about the earthquake activity. Kind of big, been the big topic here. And we had quite a few hundreds and hundreds of earthquake uh, comments there. I do appreciate every single one of them. I haven't really got back to them all. Uh, there's a chance of minor storms this week. It looks like uh, some G1 class storms predicted or at least forecasted. The current aurora looks pretty minimal, though, northern Canada. Uh, the current threat level, far as the flares go, 30% chance of M flare, X flare remains about 10%. Um, looking at the SDO, 
Um, let me refresh this, make sure we got the latest magnetic field structure, um, which is right here. Stand by for a second. Uh, st still got this pretty massive sunspot region, northeastern section of the sun. But uh, I'm noticing a little bit of declining activity here amongst the structure and the instability. Uh, huge sunspots, but not a whole lot of uh, polarity differences here. Um, so we're not seeing any major threat level currently um, from any of these solar flares or any of these sunspots, I should say. All right, guys, um, have a good night. I uh, didn't mean to make this such a long uh, update video, but gosh darn it. There's a lot of activity striking out here along the West Coast. <coughs> and um, unfortunately, we got to see some further large-scale activity westward here uh, for this to kind of die down. Right now, the West Coast is under the gun with that teeter-totter effect. Um, stay safe out there. That's uh, about the best advice I can issue out there. The earthquake activity is still showing up across the Petrolia station pretty significantly. And the Dinsmore station, which is down, come on, there we go, uh, down here. Those two stations there in Northern California, just outside of Eureka. Still showing continuous earthquake activity there about every couple minutes or so. So the magnitudes are... Um, you know, I should say the multitudes are uh, steady and still staying, staying about the same. And the 111 earthquakes listed up there on the USGS map will probably be tripled, uh, maybe more so, uh, by the time they account for all these earthquakes that are being listed up there on the graph. Be prepared, stay safe, and um, thoughts going out to the folks there around the Eureka, Ferndale area, Del Rio. Uh, seen quite a bit of damage there, so just do the best you can. Stay safe, and of course, earthquake country, west coast, you know, major subduction zone sits off of our area. Be prepared. We'll chat you guys a little bit later on tomorrow. Peace out.